Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Nigel wilson -Lock. I'm the head of secondary school here and it's my pleasure this morning to introduce you to Chris Stock. Chris Stock is our new assistant head of curriculum uh, who's joined us and he's been in Egypt for quite some time. So Chris, welcome to TBS. Thank welcome, you. Nigel. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So how long have you been a teacher? Around about 18 years now. Um, so 18 years including training. Yeah, wow. Can you remember your, your favourite teacher when you were at school? Back in, it's quite a long, quite a long time If you can ago. remember that far back. Um, yeah. I'd probably say Miss Jones, very pastoral. She yeah. had an amazing relationship with the students and really got to know us to build this positive relationship. So mm -hmm. I'd probably say her. Yeah. I always remember her for that. Yeah, okay. Um, mine was Miss Mulholland, a French teacher. Okay. Very similar thing. She got really engaged, very active in what we were doing and really got to know us as, as, as people really, rather than just like uh, slots. Um, okay, so the TBS then, your role here is very much about developing, monitoring the curriculum, learning and teaching. So can you tell me what are some of the, the most important things that we need to develop as teachers? For me, I think going back and reflecting on my favourite mm -hmm. teacher, I'd certainly say building those positive relationships with students, mm -hmm. most certainly, to get the most out of them. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say that's absolutely huge and it also helps with the intervention and discipline side of things and getting the most out of students mm -hmm. work rate, work rate wise and the students come into class motivated to see that teacher mm -hmm. and to sit in that lesson if those positive relationships are there. Yeah okay thank you that's really important to hear and it's the so we've got that. What about the, the teachers themselves, about them being learners themselves? What, what, what's your opinion on that? Um, well, I think it's very, very important to be a lifelong learner. Mm. It's like anything, if you, if you remain stagnant, mm. the environment changes and sometimes your skills can become obsolete. Mm. So it's very, very important to keep up with the changes in the environment, um, the changes in uh, the education sector and make sure you're up to date so you can deliver the best possible standards for students. Mm. That's a really good point. It's quite often that uh, we meet parents or other people say, say, when I was at school. Mm. And you look back and that's, we're looking at something 40 years ago sometimes. Exactly. So, so schools have changed immensely in 40 mm. years. And, and the rate of change compared to when I was at school to now, it, they're just different places completely. Exactly. If, if, as a teacher, if you don't keep up to date with professional development and training, you're not going to be able to deliver the best, um, best standards for students. Okay. Now, you have, mm -hmm. talking about your own learning, you, you committed to something called the, the MPQSL yeah. and complete that. So can you just tell us a little bit more about that and what, what your main learning was from it? Um, it's the National Professional Qualification for Senior Leadership and basically what it was, was a qualification that helped you understand the theoretical framework behind leadership and apply it to practice. So I had an ongoing um, course and I had an ongoing um, program where I had to lead, well it's actually my own boss, and uh, some other people on the same level in improving the standard of teaching across the secondary school. Wow, okay. So it's, it's like a theoretical qualification that you put into practice. Mm -hmm. I also did a master's a few years ago and that mm -hmm. was a very similar thing, applying theory to mm -hmm. real life practice. Wow, okay. So we know where to come for some help and support then. Yes, you're more than welcome. Excellent. So we're here and we, we call ourselves the British School. We run a British curriculum, but obviously it, it's tailored for Egypt. And, you know, so we've got a, uh, an international curriculum. So can you tell me, what, what is the, how would you compare us to a UK school curriculum wise? We have got some strong similarities. Um, obviously we do the key stages. We follow the national curriculum, uh, key stage three. We also do the GCSEs, well IGCSEs, they're very, very similar. And we also run the AS and the A-level programmes as well. Yeah. And they're obviously originally UK based, but the syllabus is a slightly adapted for an international context. However, there are ministry requirements that we deliver Arabic and some religious study skills. Um, I believe we're doing that successfully. Whereas in the UK, they obviously wouldn't have to embed local um, local things from the ministry yeah. or from our ministry. Okay. So that's, that, that's the main difference. Yeah. And, I, and from being here, I've learned as well that, that the MOE, Ministry of Education requirements, um, without those, students mm. can't go to university in Egypt if they're Egyptian. So mm. that's really important. And the fact that we do both at the same time, I think is, is a testament how, how well our, our teachers work in that. Okay. So, um, 
we're working on something as a school called a, a learner profile. Okay, yeah. So can you give me some idea of like what that is and, and really I suppose to what parents, what, what do they need to be thinking about? Okay, basically it's a set of skills, stroke attributes, characteristics that we'd like the students to develop as their time goes through the, the whole school. Yeah. And obviously I'm very, very interested in the secondary school. So by the time a student leaves school, we want them to have these qualities and attributes. So you mentioned being a learner, an independent mm. learner for a teacher. We want students to have that attribute as well. So for me, my own personal attribute would be lifelong learner because I've done my MPQSL and I've done my masters and I try and keep up to date with everything that's going on. We'd encourage students to do that type of thing as well. We'd also want students to be caring, mm -hmm. collaborative, for example. Um, so when they leave school, they've got this, these attributes and this holistic um, set of skills mm -hmm. and attributes that they can meet and aspire to, to help them with later life. So to help them with university and the workplace okay. also. Does that get in the way of our students getting top grades, no. academic grades? No. No, because really we can, in, that we can embed certain things in the curriculum. We want a student to be collaborative, okay? We can get them doing group work projects. It just ticks that box. Mm -hmm. We want students to be independent learners. We want students, so therefore we set them a study for the, for the next lesson. Um, we want students to be caring mm -hmm. um, and considerate. We've got volunteer programs in the school. Nothing or this doesn't negatively affect mm -hmm. what they study. It just, in fact, enhances it. Okay, thank you. That's, that's really important. So we're going to be doing a lot of work about rolling out so people know about that. Uh, so, and, and I know the one I've learned the most about as a head, I suppose, is, is resilience. Yeah. Really, not, and knowing where you can get support, help, mm -hmm. and ideas from so you're never on your own. So that, that again, mm -hmm. is so students learn that they're part of this community as well. Yeah, I think definitely, yeah, 100%. Okay. We want them to be risk takers as well. Yeah. So in their learning, yeah. we want them to try new things and try and stretch, them, stretch themselves to achieve their maximum okay. potential. Right. I think we're going to have to come back many times to talk to you about your experiences, mm -hmm. but also your ideas about how we're going to do these things. But um, is there one thing you'd like parents to go away with that you, you think, if you, they always wanted to help their children, so what is the one thing you, you'd offer? For advice for parents? Yeah. Well, I'd probably say, take an interest, always support, um, and I think communicate with the teachers. I don't really like the word parents, for me they're partners. Mm. So if you need support, if you need help, if you don't understand the thing, touch base. I think with a collaborative relationship between the school, teachers, and our partners, our key mm. stakeholders, we can really support the student further to achieve further. And for me, that's, that's okay. my main advice. Get in touch and communicate. Okay, thank you. Chris? Okay, more than welcome. Welcome to EBS. Thank you very okay. much. I'm looking forward to a very, very strong and, and, uh, and positive relationship, yep. and also adding so much value to the school, so thank you. More than welcome. And uh, we'll speak to you again soon on some of the other things you touched on. Thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.